Hello, everybody. Welcome to a very special episode of my YouTube channel thing that I do. Um, special because, holy shit, look at this thing. <laughs> I am literally putting it on a pedestal right now. It is a gargantuan, uh, uh, other words that start with G so I can get to the name, Gamera box set. Holy fudge biscuits. This thing is fucking massive. Look. Look at this. Look at this. Oh my gosh. All right, so I have my notes back here, as you might see, uh, because I don't even, like, I can't even begin to, by memory, go over all the stuff that's packed away into this set. It is absolutely insane. So uh, what we're gonna do for this particular video, I'm not gonna go too deep into reviews for this set. I'm not gonna try to make it, uh, you know, an all-encompassing, uh, review because quite frankly nobody got time for that. I got a Friday the 13th box set arriving in just a bit I got I got stuff to do so um, Instead what I'm gonna do is uh, we're just gonna go through I'm gonna give you my general opinions I did watch all of these movies and I dipped into bait. I dipped into all the special features So all the special features I have at least a general understanding of I didn't watch everything um, Down to the last bit just because I didn't have time. I'd have to watch all the movies at least twice uh, in order to do that. And I just, it, it's a lot of movies. So we're just gonna dig in and go through all the details uh, that are that are important, uh, which movies are good, what, you know, maybe if you haven't watched a Gamera movie before and you decided to pick up this set, uh, you uh, don't know where to start. Um, I would say probably just start at the beginning and work your way through, but if you wanna like dibble dabble, um, you don't have as much time as I do. Now, as far as things that are a part of every single disc in the set, uh, I just want to point out, I'm not going to mention these things when I go through each film because it, it seems superfluous. Uh, every release contains an introduction from August Ragone. August Ragone, he um, is a writer and he's written a lot about Kaiju and Gamera and Godzilla and stuff like that. Uh, he's just a cinema writer. I will mention a few aspects to his introductions, but uh, I'm not going to get too deep into them. Each one contains an alternate English credit sequence. Um, let's see, they each have trailers. Some of them have like German trailers, but usually it's like the Japanese in the U.S. Either which way, it's it's trailers. Uh, so if, if that gets your goat, each disc, trailers. You get excited, man. Um, got TV spots. Each one has an image gallery, which is generally pretty expansive. Like the, the image galleries are generally really good on these, but Again, it's just image galleries. They all have them. If you if that's if if that's your bag, you'll you'll again you'll love these discs. If, if trailers and image galleries get you off, man, you are gonna have a totally good time. Now, additionally, in what I have to consider the ultimate monkey's paw, after months and months of me doing these videos, always complaining that I want more commentaries, every single film in this set contains a commentary track. And I listened to at least a good chunk of every one of them. So we'll talk about that as well. Additionally, we also, so for those that don't know, we had a bit of a, uh, an issue getting the set. Um, I, uh, my wife ordered one set from Diabolic DVD and they of course did their normal thing and they sent it off, good stuff. Uh, but it never seemed to have any interest in arriving. It got stuck, I think in Florida and just stayed there and it never l seemed to leave it was always stuck in transit and we realized after like a month month and a half this thing's probably not arriving so we ordered a new one and the new one from grindhouse video came lickety split we got it real fast this is the one right here uh, which i opened up in a previous unboxing so if you want to see the unboxing of the set you can check that out link in the description uh but yesterday <sighs> we got the set uh, from Diabolic, and it's a little beat up, as you can see, uh, but, you know, overall, it doesn't look that bad. It was definitely thrown around a bit, uh, but I will be opening this up to see exactly what the condition is of this set uh, af at the end of this video. So, uh, at the end of this video, check out uh, a, a sort of unboxing. I'm not going to take the plastic off, but I would, I'm very curious to know what shape this is in. So, if you want to see what shape this is in after several months in the postal system. Uh, check out the end of the video and we'll get into that. So with that all being said, um, what's in the set? Now, if, again, if you've seen the unboxing, you've already seen this, but I'm just gonna show it off real quick. Uh, in this dope ass box, you've got, let's do it from the bottom, 
a whole bunch of comics. You've got the Gamera series from Dark Horse Comics. Um, as you can see, that looks dope as hell. And uh, it's very colorful, very nice. Um, I actually haven't read this yet. Uh, so I'm going to do that. And I'm going to leave the review of that up to future Michael. So future Michael, if you could, if you could review this real quick. Thanks, past Michael. Uh, so, yeah, the comic book for Gamera, uh, Dark Horse comic, um, it is very much a late 90s comic book. <laughs> uh, basically, it's a sequel to Gamera, uh, Guardian of the Universe, and follows these characters, some of whom we've met before, some of whom we've never met before. Uh, many of those who we've never met before, um, white people, <laughs> and uh, they... Are, they deal with all the bullshit that happens when Gamera has to fight uh, another Gauss, uh, as well as um, uh, Virus and Zegra, which is an interesting combo. I would have expected, you know, I would I would think that they would want to go with monsters who are more a little bit more different. I feel like uh, Virus and Zegra are a little similar. Everything considered, I feel like Giron would have been a much more interesting baddie to place against Gamera in this comic. Uh, but, you know, or G or Jigger. Um, but y'all will find out about that later in the video. Uh, anyway, it's it's fine. It's fine. I don't really have a whole lot to say about it. It's a quick read. Uh, it's just a few issues. Uh, it is a 90s comic, and that entails all of the cons and some of the pros that, that come with that. But, you know, it explores a little bit more of Gamera's um, uh, origin in the Heisei era. So if you wanted to kind of have a better understanding of what maybe the idea was there, that'd be great. But I, I don't know that it really matters all that much. I also am, like, it doesn't really work well or as well with the sequels. And so it really exists in this very odd place in the continuity. So, but you know, it's cool. Um, that it's included, which is, is something you're gonna be talking about quite a bit. Things that are cool that they're included. Uh, but yeah, it's fine. Thank you, future Michael. I appreciate it. Uh, so there's that. I was gonna put that back in the box. Why did I do this standing? I do not know. And then we've got a, let's see here, selection of interviews and articles, essays about Gamera. Dope as hell, dope as hell. And it's very just like, look at that cover. That is an amazing cover. Oop -a -doop -a -doop. So if you like reading material, you've got basically two books worth of reading material in this collection. And then, of course, you have the set itself. Um, each one comes with a page, or each set of discs <laughs> comes with the page um, of illustrations of the monsters that Gamera fights, as well as Gamera himself. Uh, and you can see that it's pretty dope. You have the little Star Wars thingamabob right there. Um, so it actually doesn't take up that much space if you think about it. Like, they could have made this set as big as the Godzilla set, but they didn't. Um, they decided to go real crazy over there at Arrow. Uh, and then at the back you have these little cards with all of the different monsters and stuff on them. So you can, you know, throw around some cards. There's Zegra. Get into him. Or Jigra, as the, uh, I believe the Japanese say. I could be wrong about that. I don't know. You'll notice I don't really say any of the names associated with these movies because I don't like butchering people's names. Uh, anyway, so there's the set. That's how it looks. It is dope as hell. I've been it's been a pleasure to go through these because the set is just that just beautiful to behold. It is easily one of my favorite sets I've ever bought. Um, like even like I love my Ingmar Bergman set from Criterion, and of course that one is like almost completely all-encompassing uh, and contains a fuckload of movies. But I gotta say, this is this is probably the, my favorite set of my collection now. Uh, even though Gamera is not necessarily my absolute favorite thing, I did learn to love this giant turtle, possibly due to Stockholm Syndrome, I'll admit. Uh, but as you'll see, I actually had a really good time. So let's just dig into these reviews. Uh, we're not gonna spoil much. Um, if you are fresh to this and you're just deciding whether or not this is worth the investment, especially now that you'll be getting it on the secondhand market, or maybe you're in the future buying the standard release and you're deciding if you want uh, all the special features, if you want to buy all these movies in HD, here they are. Now, additionally, um, I did already own this Gamera um, 11, uh, let's see, uh, 11 movie set, Gamera Legacy Collection, 1965 to 1999, right here. Uh, this was released in... 
2014 from Mill Creek. It does not include uh, the last film in the series. And uh, I decided, you know what, we might as well have something to compare to. Uh, I don't have any other Blu-rays, unfortunately, to compare to, but I figured if you're like looking to upgrade from the DVD set, uh, throughout this review I will be showing uh, various samples from this set versus uh, the same shots from this set, just to give you an idea. Uh, I thought that would be a nice little extra, so keep a look out for that in the review. And yeah, let's dig in to Gamera, the complete collection. Jesus Christ. I, I bought two of these. Let's do it. So the first Gamera is a pretty cheap little black and white production. Not as cheap as some of the movies would become in the future, but still pretty inexpensive. And basically just sees the titular monster rising up from the depths and attacking humanity. Of course, humanity uh, primarily existing in Japan. This thing wastes very little time. We're introduced to Gamera, the giant jet-setting turtle monster, just five and a half minutes in when he emerges from the Arctic to wreak havoc having been awoken by a whoopsie-doodle atomic bomb exploding nearby. From there, the people of Japan must find a way to defeat this seemingly unstoppable monster that craves fire and destruction before it wipes out the country. While Gamera would soon become a more child-friendly character, in this one he operates in the same general capacity as Godzilla did in his original film. Tons of death. Uh, the one fascinating difference is that Gamera does save a child from dying, suggesting that Noriaki Yuasa, the director, had a general idea of where the franchise might go. Now, based on some of the extras that I've seen since watching this film, uh, it would seem that the studio had an idea of where this would go as well. Like the producer, there's a lot. There's a lot of hands at work here. But Yuasa is the like guiding force behind the Showa era series. He basically directed all of them. Although the second installment, he was replaced and only directed the special effect sequences. Uh, nonetheless, he did direct or have a hand in every single film in the initial series. So I'm just going to assume that he had this general idea, but it could have been the producer's uh, accounts vary. Anyway, Gamera the Giant Monster is certainly no Godzilla, but it is a serviceable, albeit simplistic film that moves at a strong pace and, to be fair, does attempt to carry the same themes of atomic energy and the destruction that it can bring. It's just, you know, kind of dumb. Now, as far as the overall quality of the film, uh, it is perfectly serviceable. You know, as I said, it, it does tread in a lot of the same waters as Godzilla. It all starts because of an atomic explosion in the Arctic. You know, humanity shouldn't be messing with forces beyond its control, playing God, etc., etc. Uh, it doesn't reach the same emotional heights as Gojira did. You know, it's kind of just a standard monster smash mash movie with a pretty ridiculous conclusion, uh, whereas Gojira is, you know, it's a classic and it takes things and, and implements this horror and destruction in a very stark manner. And this is kind of a silly movie, and as it should be. This is a giant turtle monster that just like sucks in its limbs and emits jet fuel. <laughs> it's, it's really, really silly and weirdly erotic at times. <laughs> it's just so funny to watch. Now let's talk about the extras on this disc real quick. Um, oh, by the way, I should I should note, all of the transfers in this set are pretty darn good. I'm just going to kind of leave it up to you to kind of decide what you think of them. Obviously, the video you're watching has been processed a bit so that it can, you know, be a part of this video. Uh, so don't consider it as like the end-all be-all. Don't like, you know, bring it up on your screen and start like looking at it in detail. But you should be able to tell based on these if these look pretty good because honestly, in my opinion, they look as good as they need to. In fact, at times they look better than they probably should. So, you know, taking that what you will, I'm not the guy to go to for like the the pixel peeping type thing. All I can tell you is I really enjoyed the video quality on all of these, uh, minus Gamera Super Monster, we'll get to that. Uh, and the audio for my ears was great. It was very bombastic uh, at times when, it, when the source was available. Again, some of these movies are super cheap and do not hold up terribly well. And I'm sure the sources were equally not as good but you know when it can look great it looks great that's the the long and short of it so anyway extras for the first film in the Gamera series uh let's see we get a pretty heavily scripted commentary which um it's not bad it's just it's not really my cup of tea uh still if you want some more information about the film uh then you might like August Ragone's uh, energetic delivery here. Uh, this is the one time where he is the sole commentator, and he's good. Like, August Rigone 
he knows his shit. He knows Gamera. He knows the history of kaiju. He knows Japanese cinema. And he emits a lot of knowledge. It's just, he's scripted. And as you'll find out very soon, I don't like scripted commentaries. I think that they flow very poorly and they're kind of boring to listen to. They, in my opinion, are why commentaries maybe get kind of a bad rap uh, from the the normies, as it were. But, uh, well, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll get to, to more of those. Point is, perfectly serviceable commentary, just not really my bag. Oh, and during his introduction, he actually, he plugs his book. Let's see, it's uh, E.G. Subaraya, uh, Subaraya, Master of Monsters. Oh, that looks interesting. I should pick that up. Let's, uh, doop, 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 doop. Oh, never mind. His introduction is a little fidgety and, again, very scripted, but it's legit educational and had me rapidly adding more films from Dae to my watch list. He also refers to the little kid as a sociopath, and you know what? Yeah, that little kid sucks. Moving on, we have Remembering Gamera, which is a retrospective documentary from 1991 with the crew, director Noriaki Yuasa and writer Nisan Takahashi. It features a look at the unmade film Gamera vs. Garasharp from 1972, which certainly looks like it would have been a fun ride. <laughs> ah. <laughs> Anyway, that one's 23 minutes and definitely worth a look. Uh, then we get an interview with Noriaki Yuasa from 2002. That one's 13 minutes. Then there's a best of compilation of Gamera fights released on VHS in 1991. It's exactly what it sounds like. And then this disc also includes Gamera the Invincible, the US re-edit, which replaces Gamera's awful American military characters with actual actors. Which, uh, just, just check out this difference. Here's, uh, here's the original. Have you spotted anything on your radar screen? No, sir. It must be coated with anti-electric wave paint, sir. Right? <laughs> and here's the new guys. Well, the Russians insist their planes flew off course accidentally. Electronic interference. Oh! Uh, excuse me, sir. I mean, they couldn't have mistaken the area. Sometimes America just gets it right, you know? <laughs> yes, sir. We'll stay on red alert until we receive further orders. Goodbye, sir. Next up, we have Gamera vs. Barugan. This is the only film in the Showa series not directed by Noriaki Yuasa, who here is saddled with effects scenes, while the rest was handled by Sh 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 Shige Shigeo Tanaka? Shigeo Tanaka? Shigeo Tanaka. God, I, I suck at names. Gamera has returned to Earth after being sent into space at the end of the first film. Which, um, spoilers, I guess. Meanwhile, a group of treasure hunters retrieve a mysterious opal on an island in New Guinea. Damn it! This opal turns out to be the egg for a creature known as Barugan, which in one of the more outlandish moments in the film is hatched and made massive by being exposed to the world's most convenient infrared light. This leads to a battle of titans, with Gamera having to contend with Barugan's strangely erotic ice powers and, uh, gay pride beam. While all this is going on, we're treated to a ton of delightful melodrama that intends to explore humanity's greed. Always a fun topic. The first monster versus monster fight for the series starts out appropriately strange. Not only does it just kind of hand wave the previous film's conclusion, but then after a hefty chunk of melodramatic human story, introduces an ice breathing, rainbow beam wielding, phallic xenomorph esque, be tongued giant lizard. And it's fucking sick. You can tell that the success of the previous film was taken seriously by Dae. This is a massive kaiju film, and despite being a rushed production, I'd argue that it's a far more entertaining and fascinating film, even if it does have its own laughable moments and, yes, some pretty slow fight scenes. It also has a very dark central storyline and tons of character development. It's, in my opinion, probably the best film in the Showa series for adults and proof that a strong batch of human characters can be just as beneficial as baller monster suits. Of course, the latter certainly helps, but uh, you get it. Now, some viewers might think that Barugan is a little too human-centric and slow, um, and I get that. For me, it worked really well. For me, it's the best one up until the Heisei series, but, you know, your mileage may vary. Some people prefer their Gamera a little sillier. I think this strikes a fine balance between silly and serious, uh, and I'm all about my balance. So, for me, this is great. Uh, but I totally get why some people don't like it. If you're just looking for dumb memes, definitely not the one for you, although that rainbow beam is... is Mwah, chef's kiss. <laughs> For extras, we get a commentary by August Ragone and Jason Varney, the latter of whom is a translator and quotes, unapologetic Gamera fan. It's frustrating because neither of these guys is very good at reading their script. And it it's, it's so, again, frustrating is the main word here because they provide a lot of information. Both these guys are very knowledgeable. Uh, they get a lot across, but it's just, they're not great at this. And, oh, it's just, it's annoying to me because on one hand, if you're just looking for great information, this commentary is great. 
if you want to be entertained, it's a little less great because, again, you have that issue where they're just reading off shit, man, and it doesn't work as well. I realize that I'm reading off shit for, like, this entire review, and that might seem, um, you know, uh, hypocritical, but um, I'm not getting paid for this. <laughs> I'm not being put on a Gamera Blu-ray set. So, uh, you know, whatever. Uh, beyond that, we get an eight-minute introduction by Ragone explaining the ties to the Daimajin film trilogy. He also criticizes the melodrama of the film, which in his defense is supported by the film's lack of box office success. Didn't do as well uh, and earned the next movie a bit of a budget cut. And as with Gamera, we also get the retitled American version, War of the Monsters, which is also substantially shorter at 88 minutes. So... That might work for you. Actually, that might be perfect for people who are not as big into the human drama here. 88 minutes, you know, just glides right by. So not, not the worst idea to check out that American version. Next up is Gamera versus Gauss. And this is, this is the introduction of Gamera's most fought enemy. He's in a bunch of the movies. And, uh, you know, he, he's a poor man's Rodan, and that's okay. Gauss, the flying whatchamacallit. Ugh. Drinks blood. He's great. Now, th this movie is fucking wild. Dai brought back Yuasa as director, wisely believing that he was the secret ingredient that Barogan had been missing. And I, I think that they, they, you know, they made the right decision. The dude knows his camera, even though, you know, some of these movies kind of suck. But anyway, basically an active volcano births a giant bird-like creature known as Gauss, and Gamera soon arrives to do battle with him. <laughs> it's, it's not really any more complicated than that, actually. It's, it's a pretty simple plot. Sure, there's a whole subplot with a land development company, but it's all pretty surface level stuff. In fact, while the plots will get dumber and less interesting, this is probably the least memorable, while still being a fucking sick ass movie. <laughs> It's understandable why Gauss remains so popular. He's a great contrast to Gamera, standing tall, winged, and fighting with a laser beam that cuts through just about anything. Oh, and again, I don't, I don't want you to like think I miss, you misheard me or anything. Uh, he fucking drinks blood. Shit. He's a, he's a Dracula Rodan. That is a Dracula Rodan, and he's fucking Dracula Rodan. Anyway, this one's much more aimed at children. Although again, again. Again, the main baddie drinks blood. Fucking Japan, man. Fucking Japan. I love it. I love Japan. Overall, Gamera vs. Gauss is a wonderfully silly and outrageous kaiju epic that, for my money, is the most delightful of the Showa series. Is it perfect? Absolutely not. But all of its flaws, to quote up from the Depths review, just adds more charm. Now, as far as extras, uh, this one's not very packed. Obviously, uh, Ragone gives an introduction. It's great. It's wonderful. He does sit the commentary out, though. He hands over the duties to Stuart Galbraith IV. Uh, he's a film historian who's written quite a bit about Japanese cinema, and here presents a scripted commentary that works better than most in this set, if only because his delivery is extremely professional. I don't know if this guy, like, has considered voiceover work, done any documentaries, what have you, but uh, he's fucking good at it. So, you know, just, just hey, Stu. Do, do more voice stuff. You're great. Up next is Gamera vs. Virus. And, uh, goodbye budget. Hello, aliens. <laughs> oh, boy. Uh, so basically, this is the one where Dae was not too hip to make another movie because they weren't making as much money as they wanted. And then uh, some Americans stepped in and were like, yo, we can give you money, but you gotta include, like, alien shit, and also an American actor, child boy, and Dae was like, we love money, and so they decided to make Gamera vs. Virus. So the AIP-produced co-production that we wind up with here is a fucking weird little feast of what the hell is going on. It's a pretty short, silly movie about some Boy Scouts who are abducted by aliens and held hostage while the extraterrestrial beings plan to eat humans. Hey guys. Editor Michael here, um, in, in the future, which is also your past, but this Michael's, it doesn't matter. Point is, uh, I, I fucked this up a little, I fucked this up a little bit. Um, I, for some reason, I guess had a stroke when I was writing the script for this particular segment, and I forgot that the entire plot of Virus is about the aliens taking control of Gamera, and the kids having to help Gamera out of that situation where they're on the ship. I just, I, I got it confused with the other plots of the aliens in this goddamn series. <laughs> so, uh, apologies to all the Gamera fans who, when I said that, were like, hey, wait a second, you dumb fuck. Uh, I did watch all the movies, I just, it's a lot. <laughs>
Anyway, back to back to past, future, whatever, Michael guy. Wow. <laughs> This all leads to a giant squid monster by the name of Virus, and, uh, well, look at it. By the way, once you see Virus's dumb human legs, you really can't unsee them. It's, it's a truly just chef's kiss of, uh, outrageous costume design. Good work. I mean, like, of course, like, where are you going to hide the legs for the performer? Perfect. Just have some tentacles in the middle there. Awesome. Great. I, uh, I like Virus. He's very dumb as a monster, but still, very, very charming. Uh, similarly charming are the alien's dumb, glowing eyes. This whole movie is honestly just stupid as shit, and I know a lot of people don't like it. I think a lot of people prefer the next installment, actually. You know, it's, it's definitely part of the, like, set of films that is definitely bottom of the barrel for the franchise. Really, any movie in this franchise that deals with aliens as, like, humanoid characters is pretty bad. But I actually had a lot of fun with it. There is a fair amount of stock footage used, and that definitely isn't great. Uh, but once you get past that stock footage, it's actually a pretty fun movie. You just have to deal with the stock footage, which, um, you, you can fast forward through that, by the way. Anyway, you need some quick and easy what the fuckery. This is the movie for you. Gamba vs. Virus. It's dumb and, you know, has children. Slow down, slow down. For extras, uh, Rigoni provides another introduction, of course. This one's 11 minutes, while commentary duties are handled by Carl Craig and Jim Cirinella. Now, uh, Carl Craig is the child actor in the film that was hired on because he was an American. Uh, Carl Craig was not an actor. He was actually just the son of some military dude. Uh, he lived in Japan, he knew the language, and so he was perfect for the role, and they liked his look, I guess. He's not much of an actor, uh, but, you know, it. he... he has a certain charm, um, and we will have worse child actors in this franchise, so whatever. He became a bit of a minor celebrity in Japan for this, and, um, you know, it's cool. It's a weird, it's a weird fun story that's maybe a little bit better than the movie itself. Uh, anyway, back to the commentary. Uh, Cyrinella, by the way, he is a producer of special features, um, for sets like this. Uh, he specializes in Japanese cinema. That's kind of his call here. Uh, he's really just here to moderate the commentary and guide Craig through it. If it I mean, when really it comes right down to it. The commentary is actually a bit easier to listen to just because it's not filled with scripted moments and acts more like an hour and a half interview with Craig, every so often going into, you know, elements of the other films because, of course, we have long, drawn-out sequences that are just archive footage from those movies. So consequently, it is focused more on Craig's experiences than the film itself, but it's a reasonable trade and we still get plenty of deets. Plus, it, it's a fucking clip show movie. What, what do you expect? Gamera vs. Virus, 52 years later, is a new featurette where an actor, Carl Craig, shows off his scrapbook, the props he kept from the production, that kind of thing. He's about as wooden on camera now as he was then, but still, he seems like a cool dude. It's 12 minutes long, nifty if you're into that sort of thing. G-Fest 2003 Highlights is an hour of footage from, well, G-Fest. It's a pretty cool time capsule, lots of Carl Craig and Noriaki Yuasa action here. Um, if you just want to listen to those two talk, awesome. This this will work for you. <laughs> The fourth Nippon Jamboree is a compilation of highlights from a promo film for the Boy Scouts of Japan made by Yuasa in 1966. Now, having grown up with the Boy Scouts as like an American institution, this is, um, it's interesting. It's a weird sort of time capsule. Uh, and it's only six minutes, so maybe worth your time just to see that weird period in history. It's also only six minutes, so if you just want to see like that period of history and like this specific uh, culture, then awesome. Cool little time capsule. Next up is Gamera vs. Giron, and I've heard a lot of different ways of saying this. I'm just going to say Giron because it's how I naturally say it. And this one, for my money, is the most overrated film of the bunch. It's easily the most memed. If you've ever used a Gamera meme, uh, maybe like a GIF to, you know, weigh in on some political conversation on Twitter, uh, you might have used one of the scenes from this film. Most likely this one uh, or this one. <laughs> This one features some dipshit kids with the least expressive faces in the entire franchise. And I'm including the giant monster suits in that one, man. They're lured to a planet on the other side of the sun, where some brain-eating aliens plan to use them to get back to Earth. Remember what I said about aliens, like humanoid aliens kind of 
sucking in these movies, yeah, this movie fucking blows. Also, I'm not sure, like, why would they need the kids for this plan to work? They sent a spaceship to Earth. They could have just ridden on... It doesn't matter. It's a fucking stupid movie. Anyway, back to the plot. These kids must escape their captors while also checking out a bunch of giant monster fights. And yes, some stock footage. Now, uh, this movie is, I gotta say, pretty fucking boring. It really shouldn't be. Like, on paper, it it sounds really fun. I'm sure the clips look really fun. And there's people who enjoy this film. Don't get me wrong. I'm a bit of a, I'm a, bit of a negative Nancy when it comes to Gamera versus Giron. Uh, so I get it if you like this movie. But for me, it's aggressively boring. And the only real fun parts are when we have monster fights. And Giron's great. He's got a knife head. And he, it, it shoots shurikens. It's fucking rad. Like, it's a metal monster design. I wish he showed up in more movies because... He's super dope, but the fucking, the movie kind of, it just, it just never goes anywhere. It's just really dumb. Uh, this is the most child-centric plot of the movies yet. There's not really any adult characters other than the two aliens. And look, their great say a man gimmick is, is fun and all, but they're just really, really uninteresting. Except for when they're about to eat a kid's brain. That part's great. I actually, I like that. I like that bit. But overall, Gamera vs. Giron, not really for me. I would skip this one until once until you've watched the better stuff, if you're skipping at all. Notably, also, it's super violent during the Gauss bit, and Giron chops up Gauss, and it is so fucking great. I, I love this bit. Like, it's so, it's just, it's so gory for no good reason other than to entertain, and that it does. It's, it's my favorite part of the whole film, and I love that it might have traumatized somebody. That's great. So good. For extras, of course, we get Ragone's introduction. Uh, here it's another 11 minutes of fun facts of oddly fun wooden delivery. Uh, he talks about how this entry also featured plenty of AIP additions, including the subplot about the space race and how the American child actor Christopher Murphy was cast and later unavailable for the follow-up due to his grades. Uh, we ask a bunch for the cast, stuff like that. The commentary by David Callett, um, who's a film historian. He wrote A Critical History and Filmography of Toho's Godzilla series, among other books. Dave is kind of grating to listen to, uh, if I'm being totally honest. He seems to have an entire monologue written, and while he doesn't have an annoying voice or anything, he's very one-note and attempts to have a sense of humor. It's... ugh. Mm. But he is informative, and if you don't have the same issues I have with his style of commentary, then it's a solid listen. In fact, as I was scanning through, I found myself listening for far longer than I anticipated, so maybe it's not as bad as I'm making out. Or I have, again, Stockholm Syndrome from all this camera. Who knows? It's a wild jamboree. Next up, Gamera vs. Jiger. Possibly my favorite latter-day Showa entry, which I'm sure has nothing to do with Dae actually being able to put some fucking money into this one. That's right, last one, uh, Giron was, strangely enough, a success. They made a bunch of money, and so they put a lot of money into Jiger, and Jiger is... Oh. So good. Basically, some archaeologists make the boneheaded decision to unplug the Devil's Whistle, or whatever the fuck it's called. and awaken Jiger, a rare, strictly four-legged baddie with darts that shoot out of her face and a beam attack that goes straight Mars attacks on motherfuckers. Gamera, as he is wont to do, must defeat this menace before it's too late. But in this entry, we get bonus comatose Gamera, and as you do, the film treats us to the adventures of two young children who wind up exploring Gamera's insides. Japan! Now this one has a massive body count, like tons of people die, Jiger just is chock full of destruction, kills a lot of people. I I really love Jiger. Jiger has like these spine things that shoot out of her face. She's also one of the few female kaiju. Uh, yeah, so I guess feminism? Uh, yeah. Uh, uh. Uh, there's also this very like partially exciting, partially befuddling synergy uh, wherein they utilize the World Expo that was being held in Japan that year. Of course, they can't actually like destroy anything there, so it never like turns into a cool, you know, Expo decimating fight, but it's another one of those little things in this series that creates a time capsule uh, that I think adds a lot of charm to this film. So Jiger, while it already has like a ton of fight scenes, ton of death, a bunch of uh, pretty okay human characters, for being honest. Uh, you know, gener like one of the better latter day Showa entries, uh, plus super nostalgia y and full of time capsule goodness. Love that. Mmm, tastes good. Moving on. 
For extras, of course, we get an eight and a half minute introduction by Rigone. It's tons of casting info, including the fact that Susan is played by Christopher Murphy's sister. And apparently, Expo 70 played host to a Gamera vs. Godzilla event, which must have been quite the sight to behold. Oh my goodness. Also, apparently, uh, the Expo that year played host to a Godzilla vs. Gamera fight. Um, so it was like a real life fight that they had like a referee for and everything. Um, and they did it multiple days. I would give anything to get into, to hop into a time machine and check that out because that sounds hella dope. Beyond that, we get a commentary by Edward H. Holland, who perhaps proves the positives of sticking to a script with a commentary that a um, New Guinea investigator in the prophecies of Nostradamus. These kids have a great command of the Japanese language, that's for sure. It's been reported they studied at international schools and according to interviews were sought out directly by yuasa san Why am I doing this? Next up, Gamera vs. Zegra. Ah, it's it's the it's the Jaws three of Gamera movies. When we we go to SeaWorld, which, sure, this one has a topical environmental plot that mostly just features a gumball crown causing havoc and a Japanese version of a Benny Hill sketch, with I, I gotta admit a pretty surprising twist. The twist here is actually really good. Like I'm not gonna spoil it for you, but it's a pretty good twist. Zegra is a pretty imaginative design, although you can feel that there were definitely production limitations associated with it. And frankly, mo aliens equals mo problems. This one has a, an alien, so you know, it's it's gonna suck. That said, you know, uh, is Zegra awful? Not necessarily, there's just a lot of bullshit. Obviously they couldn't afford too many more monster fights and the fights themselves are pretty limited. Uh, so it really comes down to how much can you enjoy a kind of bad movie. Uh, this is, I think, fun for like party type stuff. I always talk about party movies in my videos. This is very much a party movie. I don't think it works very well by itself, but with a group of friends, maybe some extra intoxication, uh, pretty good stuff. So that, that's Gamera vs. Zegra. For extras, of course, we get Rigoni's intro. This time it's another eight minute history of the film. Uh, and this one's a shockingly troubled production, mainly due to Dai's incoming bankruptcy. Um, a little fun fact from this one I remember is uh, apparently the people who worked for Dai who are getting laid off and knew about the bankruptcy coming up, just trashed all kinds of props and costuming and all what have you. Gamera suits were destroyed, like they were pissed off. So this was this was very troubled. The fact that we got a movie that is even semi-coherent is shocking. But as it stands, it, it kind of almost feels like a Superman 4 type movie, except I would say the next film feels far more like Superman 4, but we'll, we'll, we'll get there in a second. We also get a commentary by Sean Rhodes and Brooke McCorkle. They're authors of Japan's Green Monsters environmental commentary in Kaiju Cinema. Uh, these are some of the less prestigious writers brought in for commentary duty, but credit where credit is due. They don't follow a script and they manage an enjoyable conversational tone that's easily one of the best to listen to. It's definitely a far cry from the previous snoozer, that's for sure. They go on for a little long about the male gaze in a way that feels a little, I don't know, first year film student, and I could have used a little bit more history and a little less just telling me what the fuck is going on in a scene. There is a lot of that. So we do kind of trade, you know, we, we get more of a conversational tone, but we get less historical information. Not that we don't have it here. It's still informative. It's just, I feel like, you know, of all the people that could have gotten to have a conversational commentary, this one's not, th these, these guys probably should have just stuck to a script at times, but still, Enjoyable enough to listen to. They seem like cool dudes, or cool dudes and dude and do that. A cool dude and a cool do that. It doesn't matter. Next up, Gamera Super Monster. Oh boy. Oh boy. Oh boy. Oh boy. This fucking sucks. <laughs> super monster follows some kid obsessed with turtles who, along with a group of alien superheroes, does battle with an evil ripoff in space via stock footage from the films that preceded it. That's, that's my, that's my, that's my, that's my plot summary. Yep. Um, that, that's all I really can say. It's, it's very dumb. It's very, very, very dumb. Uh, mo like there's, they use anime stock footage in this. They, there's not like a single actual new Gamera fight. 
Uh, it, the majority of the runtime is just sequences from previous films. Uh, the positive side of that is they are shortened, shortened a little bit. So, you know, if you just want, like, a clip show, then this is one of the better clip shows. And I did have some fun with the, like, weird female superhero group. You know, I really like the, the wrestler that they used for one of them. She's great. But, like, the, the action scenes that are added in are awful. The video quality is terrible. Um, and I, you know, not nothing against Arrow. It just is a bad-looking movie. Uh, and there, you know, there are times where it shines through, but it just... The whole way through, you feel like, like I said, Superman 4, this feels like a Superman 4 type flick, except less entertaining. So take from that what you will. For extras, of course, we get an introduction by August Ragone, which at six minutes is probably six minutes more than is necessary. Still, he gives us plenty of info about this weird little curio, mostly in regards to the cast, notably Japanese female pro wrestler Mak Fumiaki. We also get a commentary by Richard Pusateri, really getting the shit into the stick here. <laughs> Uh, Pusateri is a film critic who is apparently credited with originating the term Gino, G-I-N-O, uh, to refer to the American Godzilla, Godzilla in name only. You, you, you get it. He's not too shabby. I was pretty on board at first, but as he relies more and more on his script, uh, his jokes get, get hella lame and forced. Like, this guy's not a comedian, but he thinks he is, and it's a little annoying to listen to. Um, he also has this problem where he he doesn't seem to know things about the movie that seem like they should be basic knowledge for anyone doing a commentary for it. Uh, Ragone actually mentioned some stuff in his introduction uh, that then this guy just is confused about in the film itself, which I, I don't know. I find that a little annoying. But hey, what are you going to do? It's a clip show. It's the worst movie in the series. I'm, I'm shocked it has a commentary to begin with. So whatever. Now, after Super Monster, Dai was was pretty much done for a long time. They actually were done a little bit beforehand, but Dai stopped making Gamera movies for a long time until in the mid-90s, 1995 to be exact, we got Gamera, the Guardian of the Universe. Here we fucking go. All right, so Gamera, Guardian of the Universe, is one of the greatest kaiju movies of all time. Uh, you've probably heard about it if you don't already know about it. Uh, it's fantastic. Guardian of the Universe welcomes Gamera back in quite possibly the greatest reboot of franchises ever seen. Steven Seagal's daughter, no, seriously, stars as a young woman with a mysterious connection to Gamera, here an ancient weapon designed to save humanity from the threat of the much-improved Gyaus, itself another ancient weapon. This link, along with various other new elements, provides far more mythology than Gamera fans had ever been exposed to in the franchise. Also, Bebe Gauss is fucking great. Love that little guy. For extras, of course, we get the introduction by August Ragone. Uh, it's a scant four minutes long, but for kind of a good reason. He doesn't want to spoil the magic, which I, I get, man. We then get a commentary by Matt Frank. As with many of the commentaries, this feels very scripted. Matt is a comic book artist and writer who's written a bunch of Godzilla comics. He also did the artwork for the Arrow Gamera collection. He's energetic, but again, that... Oh, that scripted thing just drives me nuts. A Testimony of 15 Years Part 1 is a two-hour documentary. God damn. Two-hour documentary. Uh, it's, again, it's... And this just... Okay, so this... This thing is a massive six-ish hour documentary. Um, it's literally just talking head interviews. Um, there's some footage inter intercut, but it's really just talking heads. Uh, it's 90-something members of the cast and crew that they interviewed. Uh, from the production of all three films, and it is massive. I have not watched all of it because while it is interesting, it's six hours and change of just people talking in the same drab room. There's not a lot of effort put into actual production quality. It's not Arrow's fault. This is just an archive feature that they brought in, but man, uh, on the one hand, it's super cool that it's so long. On the other hand... Holy shit. So, you know, it's it's a it's a mixed bag. That's a, a one thing about a lot of the special features in this set. Um, aside from the commentaries, it's a lot of archive material, which I think is great. Um, but if you've already been a huge Gamera fan up to this point and you've collected all of this, it's not going to be that much new features-wise. Anyway, we also get interviews with Shusuke Kaneko and Shinji Higuchi. It's 35 minutes with the director and the special effects director. Uh, you get a look at the costumes hanging up, stuff like that. It's a, it's a, it's a pretty good little uh, uh, double interview thing. There's also a uh, special effects interview with Shinji Higuchi, which is a separate hour and fucking half interview from 2001, which... 
is insane. We then get Behind the Scenes, which is an archive 16-minute featurette with a lot of great footage of the production in action. From there, we also get Production Announcement, which is five minutes, and it's the production announcement. <laughs> Backstage clip, The Legend, is four minutes of behind-the-scenes footage, very dated, making it very fun. Yubari Film Festival is a six-minute unveiling of the film at the Yubari Fantasy Film Festival, which, sh shocking, based on that that name. I'm, I'm Wow, what else could it be? And then finally, we get Hibaya Theater opening day. Uh, it's a hair under three minutes, and it's similar to the previous archive piece. Uh, we get a look at folks piling into a movie theater in the 90s to watch a fucking Gamera movie, plus some clips of the cast and crew inter introducing the film. Uh, and that's it. That's 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 just Gamera 1. <laughs> now this was followed up by Gamera 2, Attack of Legion. Improving on almost everything from its predecessor, Gamera 2 is basically the one time in the series where adding an alien plot isn't such a bad thing. It also doesn't have any derpy knife boys, and instead gives us an incredibly effective and unique villain in the form of Legion, a wild looking creature that seems almost impossibly ornate. It also keeps a handful of characters from the previous entry while still providing a pretty standalone story, giving us a sense of a universe being built. Um, and this one, uh, I'm gonna be honest, I watched this a little high, uh, but even then, really solid film. Uh, I love the suit design for Legion. Legion is a horrifying monster. A lot of death happens in this, uh, more in the next one, but um, tons of death. Uh, the character story is probably the weakest here out of the three films. That's actually the one point where it doesn't really get improved upon, but I do like that they keep the detective character from the first film, bring him in here as a security guard. There's stuff like that that's really fun. So I, I do really like this. I do, I, I love this movie, what am I saying? This is a phenomenal film. Uh, and it is an improvement, but it's only a slight improvement. Uh, but we'll get to an even bigger improvement in just a second. Uh, for now, let's talk about the extra features. For commentary duty, we get Kyle Yount. Uh, he's the host of Kaiju Cast and the creator of the Shrine of Gamera, a very old website about giant jet turtles. Again, this one's very scripted. Uh, obviously, it's, he's, he's very dedicated and knowledgeable. Uh, and after a few minutes, I wound up actually enjoying his delivery quite a bit. So it's not the worst scripted by a great margin. It's one of the more easy listening commentaries in the set. But again, if you have my problem where you just don't like heavily scripted commentaries, that'll be an issue. Um, although I just realized that there's probably some people watching this who are like, man, I wish commentaries were more scripted. And you're, got, you're guy, you're gonna have a ball, man. You're gonna have a, a fucking giant turtle ball. Uh, of course, we get our intro by August Dragone at four minutes. Fun tidbits about the actors, general reverence for the trilogy. Lake Texarkana comedy dub is a hillbilly dub recorded by ADV Films for the 2003 DVD release. It's pretty solid from a technical side of things. It's charming, definitely something that I will watch in full. A Testimony of 15 Years Part 2 is another two hours of interviews. It's just a continuation of what I already talked about. Behind the scenes production footage is about an hour of video shot during production. It includes subtitles, which is certainly helpful. And honestly, as someone who likes production footage and just general behind the scenes B-roll, fuck yeah, man. Behind the scenes special effects footage is a hair under 40 minutes of really cool video footage, including testing the suits before they've been finished. It's mostly really fascinating if you're curious about what all goes into these giant monster fights, uh, which again, for me, Awesome. Production announcement is six minutes. It's clips of the cast and crew introducing the film, uh, partying, uh, partaking in a press conference, you know, that sort of thing. Nothing too exciting. Uh, backstage clip, Sky, that's three minutes of behind the scenes footage set to music. Again, very dated in a very fun way. Promotional events, similarly, uh, this is a five minute clip show set to music showcasing the construction and attendance of various special Gamera events. Uh, there's a lot of really adorable stuff here. I wouldn't say it's like super exciting or anything, but you know, if you're in, again, if you're into time capsules, bada bing. That seems to be the, the ongoing trend for this set. A lot of time capsules. Hibaya Theater opening day. That's about four minutes of footage from the opening of the film. Uh, comedy dub outtakes is a hair under four minutes. It's various takes which were not used in the comedy dub. Simple as that. They're funny. It's it's a funny comedy dub. Like, I actually, I do think the comedy dub is pretty good. Uh, it's not something I would listen to a lot, but I, I might watch it all the way through once with the dub. Who knows? Now, this next one, you're going to want a cigarette ready after this because this shit is mwah, golden. This is Gamera 3, Revenge of Iris. Holy fuck. Revenge of Iris is basically perfect kaiju cinema, and in my opinion, the best film of the franchise, and easily in the top five of the genre. 
Long story short, this entry follows a strong ensemble of characters, including a high school aged girl whose father and pet cat were killed during the events of Attack of Legion. Upon relocating to a small village, she winds up awakening a mysterious being that she dubs Iris. Feeding on her hatred of Gamera, Iris becomes a being of extreme power that goes on a massive rampage. In the meantime, we also have Gamera showing up to cause ultimate havoc in his war against the Gios creatures, creating an immense tension between the supposed friend of all children and humanity. This all leads to an epic finale that pushes the limits of what's possible with Suitmation, and is also just really cathartic, like everything comes to a, a natural conclusion. Uh, there is like a bit of tease for a sequel, but like this is the end to a trilogy, and if like I don't I, I don't remember anything about them knowing this would be the finale for the tr like they would never come back to it or whatever, but it feels like it. Like even though it has very much a almost cliffhanger ending, it very much feels like the final moment in a trilogy, in a series, uh, in a saga, and it is epic beyond belief. There's not as much kaiju action as previous entries, but that's made up for by the fact that there is a ton of great, compelling human stuff that uh, really is the best in the franchise, and, like, really, it's the, it's the first time since Barugan uh, where you really feel like the human story is just as good, uh, if not better, than the kaiju action. By the way, it's not better than the kaiju action. The kaiju action here is fucking sick. And that's the end of the, the Heisei series. Like, uh, it was only three films, but it was three glorious films that resurrected the franchise, made it much more serious, uh, while still, like, just upgrading everything, honestly. It upgrades literally everything about the franchise and shows how much potential was there all along and gives Godzilla a run for his money. Y you hear that, you fuck? Kicked your ass! For commentary, we get Steve Rifle and Ed Godzinski, uh, whose name I just fucked up terribly, but you, know, you can read it. They are the co-writers of Ishiro Honda, A Life in Film, From Godzilla to Kurosawa, among many other books. This one's weird. Uh, there's large chunks uh, that are scripted, and they, they kind of read it off in a very wooden way, while others get less formal and work better. Like, it's a, it's a very up-and-down, hilly sort of commentary. Not bad, by any means, but it's very weird. Then we also get commentary by Gamera, Iris, and Soldier 6 from ADV Films, recorded for the 2003 DVD. Uh, this one's really dumb. It's it's humorous enough, but uh, I'm not sure I have much interest in watching the whole thing like this. I, I watched like 15 minutes of the movie with this commentary, and that was, that was kind of enough for me, I'll be honest. It's not as fun as their other dub, uh, but if you like dumb things, this is pretty dumb. So, you know, maybe. Sure, why not? Uh, it's, you know, it's it's just cool that it's included. That's that's what I'll say. It's cool that it's included. August Ragone gives another four-minute intro, uh, including a tantalizing tidbit about an unofficial fourth entry. Uh, but you'll have to you'll have to listen to the, the introduction for that information. Uh, then we get a testimony of 15 Years Part 3. That one's two hours and 14 minutes. It is the grand finale of our strangely boring yet also super informative uh, documentary. And uh, you know what? I... I Cool. I, the fact that we get all this information, cool as fuck, man. Truly. DNA Takusatsu Exhibition is a new 10-minute interview with Keiho Tsutsumi about the exhibition, which is basically a history of Heisei-era Gamera using various props from the films. Uh, the interviewer is a bit stiff, but it's interesting to see the aged props. It's it's okay. Publicity announcement is a hand or four minutes of, well, the publicity announcement, you know. It's not terribly interesting. Uh, it's photo op, that's less than a minute of the cast and crew answering questions at a photo op. Backstage clip, I Want You to Teach Me Again, is a little over four minutes of behind the scenes shots, again, set to music. Shibuto Cine Tower opening day, that's six minutes, basically the same as the previous discs. Uh, interviews, people queued up, that sort of thing. Deleted scenes, we get 10 minutes. Uh, that includes some of the weirdo underwritten uh, game designer and the psychic lady from the film. Uh, so these two characters, uh, they're kind of sort of villains in the movie, kinda, but they never really get proper, they never really get properly explored, and so you get a bit, a bit more of them in the film. They're kind of the one weak point of the entire movie, even though um, they're fun. It's just when they find, like when they finally exit the film, you kind of wonder like, what was the point of those those two? I don't get it. The Awakening of Iris Remix is another montage of behind-the-scenes footage. This one's 37 minutes long, including a ton of special effects shots. Uh, if you were curious about the various plates needed to create these huge composite shots, this should work for you real nicely. This is this is good shit, man. This is like 
for someone who really enjoys special effects and like the breakdowns of how they're done, this shit is, this is like some this is some good shit, man. Storyboard animation is six minutes with an interesting selection of footage and storyboards to get the right idea of what was needed. I kind of wish it was longer, but it's still pretty cool to see. Uh, special effects outtakes is two minutes of just some dude wrestling with camera. I don't really know what the fuck that was about. And then comedy dub outtakes is three minutes of more dub outtakes. Um, I'm not sure where the dub was exactly, but yeah. Three minutes of dub outtakes. So that was uh, Gamera 3. I honestly, I'm a little disappointed with the selection of extras on the Gamera 3 disc. I do feel like we, I, I really could have used like a big all-encompassing essay uh, from Arrow about the films and specifically about Gamera 3. I really feel like there should have been more new stuff on this disc, but that's my biggest complaint so far is that, you know, I get this amazing movie and this amazing set with all these extras, um, mostly archive extras, I could have used some newer stuff for these films, especially since, you know, the people are still alive. It should be easier to get, and that just isn't there. That said, I understand the complications that arise when trying to do that, so I'm not... This isn't really a negative, it's just one of those things I would have liked to have seen. Moving on! Gamera the Brave. So Gamera the Brave is the final film in the series from 2006, uh, last movie that they made for Gamera. And, uh, ooh, and by the way, uh, Stuart Anderson, thank you so much for pledging $10 to the Patreon. Uh, uh, you, you just, uh, your notification just came up while I was recording this. So that puts a timestamp for you and only you on when I recorded this. So thank you so much, Stuart. Uh, anyway, um, Gamera the Brave is honestly probably my second favorite Gamera movie. Anyway, let's, let's talk about it. Uh, maybe with my fourth. It's one of my favorites. It's really good. Let's just talk about the plot. This one's a delightful throwback with a ton of talent both behind and in front of the camera. Gamera the Brave is one of the better Gamera films, although it does get shit on sometimes for coming after the absolute greatness of the Heisei trilogy. It's scaled back and simpler, telling the story of a child who befriends a weird little turtle that happens to be a Gamera. And wouldn't you know it, there's a big ol' monster rising from the depths, ready to wreak some havoc. Can Gamera defeat this titan? Will the Japanese government be a bunch of dunderbutts? Just how teary-eyed will pet owners be while watching this saccharine slice of kaiju cinema? Find out in Gamera! The Brave! Where the 90s trilogy was extremely violent and tuned more for adult audiences, Gamera the Brave goes in the opposite direction. This thing is cutesy as hell. We still get some pretty extreme violence for a kid's movie, but it's nowhere near the complete just like... hell. That, that Gamera puts some town, the, the city folk in, in Gamera 3. You don't get any of that mass carnage that you got there, although there is some death and honestly some pretty extreme violence for a movie that is obviously aimed at kids. The brown color grade on daytime exteriors is a bit off-putting and gives the film a cheap feel at times, but that's probably the biggest criticism I can lob at this thing. Well, that and nixing Gamera's trademark roar. The, the fuck is that? Beyond that, um, the sit girl subplot is a little much. I could have used less of that. And then it's maybe like 10 to 15 minutes too long as a film, but that's quibbling. Like that's the worst I can come up with. It's very charming. It's very cute. Uh, if you wanted a movie to show, a Gamera movie to show your kids, this is probably the best one of the bunch. Again, there is a lot of violence. Definitely not like a little little toddler movie, but you know, if you, if you have a pretty mature kid, um, this is great. Like this is wonderful. It's a lot like, it kind of talks about um, dealing with pets and saying goodbye to pets and kind of the inevitability of pets dying, which is, you know, pretty tough stuff, but certainly important for a growing child. So uh, great movie for kids. I think great movie for adults as well. Highly, highly recommend this one. If you uh, were going to go through this, the whole franchise, uh, but you didn't want to do it in order, you wanted to start with the best stuff, I would say maybe like start with Gamera, the giant monster just to have that OG in there and then maybe Barogon and Gios and then skip everything um even Jigger as much as I love Jigger skip Jigger uh do the the trilogy the 90s Heisei trilogy and then watch this movie because that is a great assortment of kaiju action um kaiju action I, I keep saying kaiju or kaiju interchangeably it's because I suck just it, frequent viewers of my channel you know this I have me and words are enemies. As for extras, uh, this is the only one without a introduction by August Ragone. I don't know why that is, but he's not here. 
uh, commentary. We get Keith Aiken and Bob Johnson. They're co-editors of SciFiJapan.com. Uh, these guys are actually really good and don't generally sound scripted while still providing a ton of information about the film rightly proclaiming it as underrated, dissecting its more mature themes despite ostensibly being geared towards children. There are some times as I was skimming through that they reverted to reading off notes, but overall there doesn't seem to be too much of that. I think it's a pretty, probably a pretty good mix of both. As with all these commentaries, I didn't watch the entire movie through with it, but I did watch a significant amount and I quite like their commentary. How to Make a Gamera Movie is a fun archive featurette wherein director Tasaki explains how the film was made. It runs for 37 minutes and winds up being super informative, perhaps even good for young Gamera fans interested in the filmmaking process. Behind the Scenes of Gamera the Brave is a one hour, three minute archive behind the scenes feature that covers the whole production. It's a great piece, really like this one. The Men That Made Gamera is probably the standout special feature on this disc. It's a 43 minute archival documentary style featurette on the entire Gamera franchise. It's hosted by the dude who played the cop turned security guard turned homeless guy in the Heisei trilogy. This is basically a promo for Gamera the Brave, but if any Gamera fans haven't seen this one, it's a really informative and easy to digest history. And then we get opening day premiere, that's five minutes, it's basically, it's, it's what you'd expect, it's like, you know, this is not the 90s anymore, but it's the same, same bullshit. Keiho's Summer uh, is a 10 minute archival featurette on Keiho, one of the young stars of the film. Uh, it's mostly just, this one's weird, it's just like behind the scenes of her doing photo shoots and like, meeting people. Um, it's weird, it's not really an interview, like she does talk sometimes, but I don't know. I find it kind of weird in that, like, ugh way. You know how some Japanese things are a little, ugh. This is one of those, ugh. I don't, I don't have it upon those very often, but in this, ugh. Um, so yeah, not a, not a big fan of that one. And then finally, special effects supercut. That's 32 minutes of finished and in progress visual effects with commentary by those involved in the CGI process. Uh, this one's pretty dry, but you know, it understandably, they're, they're visual effects folks. They're not gonna be the most exciting to listen to, but it's cool, you know, you get to hear about the CGI used in the film, which is admittedly not amazing, but you know, it's also 2006 Japanese kaiju CGI, so, eh. Uh, anyway, that's it, that's that's every movie. Oh my God. Oh, that has a lot of, has a lot of kaiju, man. Oh, Jesus Christ. So yeah, that's that. Uh, now, uh, what do I think of this set? I think that this is legitimately, and I kind of, I mean, I talked about this at the beginning, but uh, this is legitimately one of the best sets I've ever seen. Again, I do wish there was more new stuff, special features wise. Um, and it, it would have been as simple as just like some visual essays. Uh, I think that a lot of companies maybe underrate how good or how beneficial a visual uh, a video essay can be. So I would have loved to see that. I do appreciate all the commentaries. The fact that we have commentary for every single movie is amazing. I just wish that they were better. Um, and it's, it's hard because, you know, there's not really a lot of people you can get for an English language commentary for a series of Japanese monster movies. Uh, so, you know, you have Carl Craig, obviously, um, but that's the only returning, that's the only cast guy or production person that we have. Everybody else is writers and film critics. And, you know, it's no one who's like well known for their, you know, skills as a speaker. With Vinegar Syndrome releases, you know, you have like the Hysteria Continues commentaries. I would have loved like if they had gotten someone who does like a kaiju podcast who is a Gamera aficionado to do some of these. That would have been great. You know, since they're already just journalists basically. Um, I'll take anybody. Like I just want to know the history of this movie and I want to learn it in a very entertaining fashion. And a lot of this is, you know, plenty of that knowledge just not the entertainment factor for the most part. Um, but there are a few commentaries in there that are impressive, some less so. Uh, but I really, really, really love this set. Uh, I'm excited to dig into the special features more. Obviously, I wasn't able to like watch them in depth because who has the time? Uh, and I kind of needed to get this out because there's so many other things coming out in October. It's just a busy month. Uh, so those are my that's my breakdown of the extras for Gamera the complete collection from Arrow Video. So yeah, with that being said, let's open up that box and see how the other set looks. All right, so we're going to, where's my trusty, there's my bread knife. All right, got Mr. Bread Knife here. Let's see how this looks. I can't imagine how confusing this must be to people who have never watched my videos before. <laughs> All right. Okay, goodbye Mr. Breadknife. 
All right, so we've got a lot of peanuts. I'm not going to take the peanuts out, but as you can see, it is it does look pretty safe in there. Oh my god. Okay, bubble wrap, just a single layer of bubble wrap. All right, and You know what? That's not bad. The corners are a little dinged, um, but like just barely, like hardly noticeable. Um, this corner got it a little bit rougher, but like nothing, like nothing's broken. It looks pretty good. Huh. I'm sorry for everybody who wanted to see like some awful shit happen, but uh, yeah, not bad. <laughs> well, that was. Uh, was uh, anticlimactic. Um, yeah. Go watch.